Hi and welcome to One Medicine. Drug reaction with eosinophilia and systemic symptoms. It's in short form called as DRESS. It's one of the drug reactions and uh, we'll be talking about that today. So this DRESS or drug reaction with eosinophilia and systemic symptoms is characterized by cutaneous features, namely a rash and systemic upset with hematological and solid organ disturbances. So there'll be cutaneous uh, lesions will be, you see a rash here. Uh, okay, and it's a drug reaction most commonly and uh, associated with systemic upset and hematological as well as solid organ disturbances are seen here. So it's, it's a, it's a multi-system disease here. And um, earlier it was called as drug-induced pseudo-lymphoma or it is also called as anticonvulsant hypersensitivity syndrome since anticonvulsants are more commonly implicated in any drug reactions. It's also called as drug-induced hypersensitivity syndrome that is in short form called as DIHS because of the drug hypersensitivity which is there or it was also called as drug induced delayed multi-organ hypersensitivity syndrome which is in short form called as drug induced delayed multi-organ hypersensitivity syndrome okay it's also called as didmos so those were the names by which it was called it was first described by Bocquet in the year 1996 it's an idiosyncratic multi-system drug hypersensitivity disorder that is multi many systems are involved here but it's a drug hypersensitivity disorder and hematologic disturbances uh, as we told is accompanied here and uh, most common hematologic disturbance is the eosinophilia which is present okay other uh, hemat manifestations like leukocytosis lymphopenia lymphocytosis thrombocytopenia and thrombocytosis also can be present on the peripheral blood smear we see atypical lymphocytes so that's one of the hallmarks of the dress reaction lymphadenopathy solid organ involvement mostly the liver is involved here and other organs like uh, kidneys lungs intestines uh, myocardial tissue pericardial tissue splenic pancreatic thyroid seen as involvement also can be there fever is seen here and um, it is not related to the dose or to the serum concentration of the drug not to the dose or a serum concentration of the drug so epidemiology 1 in 1000 to 1 in 10,000 people are affected mean age is around 40 so middle age people are affected females are more prone to getting this and there are certain HLA alleles which are more susceptible uh, to having uh, dress okay so we have HLA B 1502 and B 3101 uh, they will be uh, hypersensitive to carbamazepine intake and HLA B 5801 uh, will be more susceptible to allopurinol intake okay so in these people we can uh, say that they are more prone to getting uh, dress for that particular drug pathophysiology the precise pathogenesis is still not fully understood uh, there are certain alterations in the metabolism of particular drugs which help in triggering uh, dress uh, certain genetic polymorphisms also will affect the detoxification of uh, certain drugs like sulfonamides and anticonvulsants so these genetic polymorphisms will again determine which uh, individual will get dress okay immune mechanisms are also involved here as i told you before hla alleles are associated interleukin 5 is said to play a part and uh, in the uh, these particular uh, individuals specific drug specific T cells would be present in the skin as well as in the internal organs most common etiology would be drug exposure dress would be caused by a drug here HLA allele association would be present and genetic polymorphisms uh, there are certain polymorphisms in the genes which will encode how a drug is metabolized inside the body so polymorphisms in gene encoding drug metabolizing enzymes may result in drug accumulation or its active metabolite will get accumulated and that will have more chances of um, hypersensitivity reactions uh, for example, uh, in genetic polymorphism, we have CYP2C9 polymorphisms. They will have phenytoin-induced adverse drug reaction. DRESS is also said to be a T-cell mediated hypersensitivity reaction. Drug-specific T-cells are found here. There are two main pathogenesis which will explain uh, the drug uh, DRESS reaction. Uh, one is there is drug-specific immune response which is seen. So basically when a drug is taken, there will be a specific type of T-cells which are activated and they will cause the reactions. Okay. Second thing is HHV that is human herpes virus will be reactivated okay with, with antiviral immune responses so that these are the two mechanisms of uh, dress in drug specific immune responses it was proven by the patch testing in vitro demonstration of specific cd4 and cd plus t cells uh, were found which will produce uh, tnf that is tumor necrosis factor and interferons uh, were produced in the acute phase there was expansion of the t cell subtypes even regulatory t cells were said to play a role 
Jack Stack pathway also is set to play a role. So in drug specific immune responses, because of certain drugs, there will be certain immune cells which will be activated, which will cause the reactions. Then reactivation of human herpes viruses. In 75% cases, there was reactivation of uh, viruses. That is HHV6, 7, cytomegalovirus and Epstein-Barr virus. HHV6 reactivation is the most common cause for causing address. Viral reactivation will occur because of the immunodeficiency state in the person. So in immunodeficient individuals, they are again more prone for dress. In the acute phase, regulatory T cells were increased, but decreased B cells and immunoglobulins were there that lead to viral reactivation. Certain drugs will cause the reactivation of human herpes virus 6 and cytomegalovirus also. Again, this reactivation of viruses would set to cause dress. So here is the interaction of genetic predisposition, the imbalance in bioactivation and detoxification of drugs, HHV6 co-infection and slow acetylation. All of that will cause uh, oxidative metabolism of sulfonamides by CYP415, increased hydroxylamide and metabolites toxic to lymphocytes and uh, dress. Okay, so these are the, there are multiple mechanisms through which dress occurs. Certain predisposing factors are uh, drugs most importantly and if the patient has coexisting neurological or rheumatological disease, HIV co-infection and genetic polymorphisms uh, involving interleukin 1 and 10. Most common drugs which cause dress are, you, are, uh, you can remember it also as 5 A's uh, which will cause, I will explain that. So we have allopurinol, anti-epileptics like carbamazepine, phenytoin, and lamotrigin, antibiotics like vancomycin, amoxicillin, um, minocycline, piperacillin and tazobactam, sulfur drugs like sulfacillin, dapsone, sulfadiazine, furosemide, omeprazole, ibuprofen. So the 5 A's would be... Um, Allopurinol, antibiotics, anticonvulsants, antiretroviral drugs. We have antifungal also, which is turbinafin, which can cause a drug reaction. Okay, so these are the five ways. In antibiotics, sulfonamides uh, and related, minocycline, nitrofurantin. Anticonvulsants would be carbamazepine, lamotrigine, phenobarbital. Antiretroviral would be indinavir and nevirapin. Okay, so five ways. I'll write it here. Allopurinol, antibiotics. Antiviral, antiviral is antiretroviral that is indinavir and nevirapin. Then we have uh, antifungal turbinafin. Then we have anticonvulsant, carbamazepine and phenytoin. So these are the five A's which causes drug reaction. Clinical features, non-specific symptoms in the early phase is seen. Uh, early phase, you don't actually have a specific feature of dress. Prolonged latency following drug exposure is one of the main features here. Okay, there'll be prolonged latency. That is, the patient will have taken drug a long time back and after that, he'll get the drug reaction. So, the time interval between that would be around 2 to 6 weeks is the time interval. Symptoms can occur even one day following uh, re-exposure. So, if the patient has is exposed to the drug for the first time, then it might take 2 to 6 weeks. But if it is uh, re-exposure, then even one day would be enough to cause the reaction. In the prodromal phase, they might have asthenia, malaise, fatigue and fever rash with facial swelling and was the first clinical feature that the patient would get is the rash with the swelling the facial swelling would be present and that would be the first clinical feature uh, you have to carefully elicit drug history in such patients you have to explore the family history as well if there's any predisposition associated with it the rash um, would be macular erythema uh, mostly on the face, then the rash would uh, uh, go on to the upper trunk and upper extremities also. Along with rash, there would be also itching. That is, pruritus would be pruritus would be present. The fever would be present. That is around the 30 to 40 degrees Celsius of fever with cervical lymphadenopathy, systemic upset, hematological abnormalities, and mucous membrane involvement is rare, here, not commonly seen. So this rash in the pruritus and the fever and the lymphadenopathy with systemic involvement and hematological involvement is what is uh, important here. Urticated papillar exanthems is the most common finding that you see. So, urticaria like papillar exanthema would be present. Widespread papules and plaques with cutaneous edema. Mobile form. There are various presentations in which dress uh, can be seen. That is, one can be urticated papillar exanthema, like then widespread papules and plaques would be present. Mobile form rash would be present, like you see in measles. Then, erythroderma like can be presentation. That is, erythroderma is uh, erythema and scaling involving more than 90% of the body surface area. So, which resembles exfoliative erythroderma can be present. Erythema multiforme like lesions would be present with uh, atypical target like lesions with severe systemic features. Then other lesions would be vesicles, follicular and non-follicular pustules, purpuric lesions. An important finding here would be the head and neck edema. Uh, the face uh, would be swollen here. Uniformly swollen face with leonine faces also sometimes would be seen. 
okay and chelitis lymphadenopathy of at least two sides of more than 2 cm lymph nodes so so two sides with more than 2 cm also would be present okay so that is how it presents most common clinical phenotype widespread papules and plaques with edema also as seen here okay erythematous lesions present here here again you see a mobiliform eruption on the trunk here here is again a photo of dress uh, here the patient has got dress following allopurinol and um, so here you can see the widespread erythema present here again a dress photo here with erythema multiforme like lesions a few of them look like that now, there was more systemic uh, involvement present in this case now the you can see the like edema and the rash present right so these are the ways in which dress presents drug history eliciting that history is very important so kidney involvement allopurinol if the patient has taken that poses a very uh, great uh, risk uh, for the kidney if the patient had any underlying uh, renal dysfunction that would be exacerbated here dehydration from fever is in the prodromal phase may contribute also to renal damage uh, there are no structural abnormalities present uh, along with that there can be hematuria proteinuria urinary eosinophils histopathology of kidney which are interstitial nephritis severe renal involvement uh, will require a dialysis so if there's uh, severe involvement of the kidneys dialysis is needed hematological uh, most commonly would be eosinophilia most common finding in hematological would be eosinophilia uh, other than that pancytopenia all the cells would be reduced pronounced lymphocytosis atypical lymphocytes and peripheral smear would be seen leukopenia lymphopenia thrombocytopenia also can be present most common viscera to be involved is the liver here hepatocellular and obstructive hepatitis would be present um, those are the manifestations right and uh, if the patient has taken uh, phenytoin minocycline and dapsone then there is more propensity to get liver damage it can vary from just a mild transient hepatitis to fulminant hepatic failure requiring transplantation also sometimes uh, it can also cause death so such severe would be the uh, liver involvement in the lungs uh, they can cause a cough dyspnea pleural effusion pleuritis acute interstitial pneumonitis renal uh, function liver function testing has to be done and even uh, pft has to be done cns uh, headache seizures cranial nerve palsy limbic encephalitis aseptic meningitis are the various manifestations in which dress can present in the later part of the dress endocrine system would be involved most commonly we have thyroid gland which is involved right both hypo and hypothyroidism is seen sometimes pancreatic insufficiency like we see in type 1 diabetes would be present diabetes mellitus secondary to corticosteroid therapy also can be a presentation because for dress we have steroids and that can cause diabetes uh, SLE and alopecia areata are other things. In the gastrointestinal tract, bloody diarrhea is one manifestation. Eosinophilic esophagitis and dysphagia would be present. Difficulty in swallowing. Cardiac manifestations would be endocarditis, uh, pericarditis, myocarditis, chest pain, tachycardia, hypotension. There will be signs of pericardial effusion and pleural effusion. ECG will show T wave abnormality, arrhythmias. Echocardiography will show pericardial effusion and reduced ejection fraction. Raised cardiac enzymes like creatine kinase, uh, MB fraction, troponin 1 would be present. Acute necrotizing eosinophilic myocarditis is one condition which is associated with uh, high mortality. So, acute necrotizing eosinophilic myocarditis. The clinical variants would be we have mini dress and then we have overlap syndrome. This is overlap syndrome. And then we have mini dress. Mini dresses who do not meet the full diagnostic criteria but they have clear features of dress. They are called as people with mini dress. Uh, overlap syndrome is the patient has acute generalized exanthematous pustulosis with dress or SJST in with dress. There will be overlap between these two conditions. All of them are drug reactions basically. So if there is overlap that is called an overlap syndrome. So the diagnostic criteria would uh, be uh, it was given the scoring system was uh, given by Reggie Scar for dress and the criteria involves um, fever, lymphadenopathy of more than two sides of more than one centimeter, circulating atypical lymphocytes in the peripheral smear, peripheral eosinophilia, skin involvement okay, uh, to the extent of more than 50% body surface area and cutaneous eruptions being present, biopsy which proves dress. Internal organs, one or more internal organs, resolution in more than 15 days, laboratory results which show ANA, blood cultures, uh, HIV, HBSAG serology, chlamydia and mycoplasma serology. Uh, final score of less than 2 is no case, 2 to 3 is a possibility. If the score is 4 to 5, probable case, more than 5 if the score comes, then that's a definitive uh, case of uh, dress. So that uh, each score, it was given, the scoring for S, no and unknown or unclassifiable was given and then calculated in the end. There's another scoring system given by JSCAR diagnostic criteria for dress and here maculopapular rash was important in more than 3 weeks of, after starting the therapy with a limited number of drugs. So more than 3 weeks because the latent period here is more. 
and prolonged clinical symptoms were present even after the discontinuation of the drug was one criteria fever more than 38 degrees liver abnormality of raised alt leukocyte abnormalities like leukocytosis atypical lymphocytes and peripheral smear eosinophilia lymphadenopathy and human herpes virus 6 reactivation so these were the criteria given by j scar pathology in the epidermis we see spongiosis basal cell vascular damage and necrotic keratinocytes as in any other uh, pathology here also we see basal cell degeneration and necrotic keratinocytes present in any drug reaction you most commonly see this in the dermis the changes were superficial perivascular infiltrate around the vessel there was lymphomatory infiltrate present eosinophilic mostly inflammatory infiltrate was present with lichenoid infiltrate also higher mortality was associated with erythema multiforme like changes in histopathology and severe liver dysfunction uh, we also had uh, in the pathology eczematous interface dermatitis agep like and uh, erythema multiforme like uh, histopathological presentation also was present so basically in the epidermis we saw spongiosis with basal cell vascular degeneration and necrotic keratinocytes and in the dermis we saw perivascular eosinophilic infiltrate that was the most common presentation here the differential diagnosis uh, for the dress would be and the presentation would be similar to sepsis caused by virus or bacteria if the pustules were present they were like uh, in the agp that is acute generalized exanthematous pustulosis we have seen that in the major flexures there was a sheets of hundreds of non follicular pustules present uh, but here we had acute onset so that can present like that if it is an acute onset of uh, dress erythema multiforme because even here we see target like lesions present sjstn but the onset would be in 7 to 10 days it was SG, if, if if it was sjstn because in sjs tn also similar lesions would be seen sometimes okay uh, apart from the blisters and erosions that we see exfoliative erythroderma which is seen in psoriasis cutaneous lymphoma and severe eczema systemic vasculitis can present like this angioinoblastic lymphoma hyper eosinophilic syndrome lymphoma and pseudo lymphomas also can have similar presentation the investigations to be done are the renal investigations like urea creatinine and calcium urine analysis neurological investigations like microscopic culture sensitivity csf examination and eeg endocrine abnormalities like tsh t3 t4 blood glucose evaluation if the patient has any infective foci because of the fever you can evaluate for blood cultures mycoplasma serology gi manifestations like amylase lipase evaluation hepatic involvement like liver function test lactate dehydrogenase ferritin levels hepatitis b c serology epstein barr virus serology should be done cardiac manifestations like uh, electrocardiography echocardiography cardiac enzymes to be evaluated pulmonary manifestations like chest x ray and pfts autoimmune evaluation with anti nuclear antibody extractable nuclear antigen complement levels and anti neutrophilic cytoplasmic antibody evaluations can be done so do, by doing all of these investigations we get to know whether it is uh, dress or if there is any other condition associated managing the case would be to identify the drug and uh, you have to exclude the culprit drug that is one of the most important things to do in any drug reaction because nowadays there is this polypharmacy which is practice the patient will be taking hundreds of drugs so the patient would be on many drugs so if to identify which drug uh, would have more propensity to cause dress and avoid that drug full medical history both past and present needs to be taken supportive uh, uh, care is very important here admit the patient in icu iv fluids thermoregulation to be maintained catheterization and supplemented with oxygen cardiac insufficiency if it is present use ecmo also Uh, surveillance for coexisting infections a specialty consultation for specific organ involvement so it's a multi system uh, involvement so uh, you have to take specialist consultation and treat accordingly mainstay of therapy would be the corticosteroid therapy oral topical or iv refractory cases cyclosporine also is preferred Uh, first line therapy would be giving uh, if it's a mild disease then you can go for highly potent topical steroids then you can also go for oral prednisolone 1 mg per kg per day or methyl prednisolone 1 gram per day for 3 days a so short course of methyl prednisolone also can be given that is 1000 mg per day for 3 days can also be given second line would be to go for uh, cyclosporine intravenous immunoglobulin can be given iv ig also is tried in these particular conditions in uh, patients who who cannot take steroids or who are steroid dependent you can go for other um, steroid sparing agents as well third line would be plasma pheresis cyclophosphamide rituximab valgan cyclovir and nestyl cysteine can also be tried the complications would be the most common organ involved as we discussed was the liver so most severe complication would be the fulminant liver failure which necessitates sometimes liver transplantation sometimes leading to death also so liver is one of the more, more important organs involved here hepatic failure is a cause of death sometimes 
So in the kidneys, there can be delayed onset interstitial nephritis, interstitial pneumonitis, thyroid dysfunction, autoimmune thyroid diseases, myocarditis with cardiac insufficiency, and chronic exfoliative dermatitis. So these are the complications post uh, dress. So post dress, liver involvement, liver involvement, and uh, the lung involvement would be present. And the patient can have a chronic exfoliative dermatitis, which is left behind after the dress has been dissolved. The course would be majority of the patients will recover fully. Organ specific sequelae would be present. So evaluation needs to be done here. The mortality percentage is 2 to 10 percent. So it's a, uh, a higher mortality only. So 2 to 10 percent is a significant number. So identifying and preventing this is very important. Poor prognostic indicators would be if the patient has got erythema multiforme like lesions along with hepatic dysfunction, then that's a uh, red flag sign so that's a very bad sign that we see and dress uh, post allopurinol and minocycline also is very bad okay because kidney involvement is more here okay the patient can have acute kidney damage if the patient has associated eosinophilia thrombocytopenia pancytopenia that's also bad tachypnea tachycardia coagulopathy and gi bleeding also is a bad prognostic indicator so these are the bad poor prognostic indicators of dress